I heard about how you can do machine learning in Looker. Now, how does that work? Do I have to be a data scientist to use it? Because I'm not. No, definitely not. It's actually intended for the average Looker user. Let me show you. Hi, Chris. It's great to have you join us today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Martin. And thanks for inviting me. So I'm the Machine Learning Accelerator Lead at Google Cloud. Before joining Google about three years ago, I worked as an economist doing public policy research, mostly for state and federal agencies. Oh, so you must know a lot about machine learning and statistics. Uh, now, we are talking about machine learning in Looker today. Uh, first off, can you tell us what Looker is? Absolutely. So Looker is Google's enterprise business intelligence platform for analyzing and acting on governed data. Many large organizations use it to build custom data workflows that empower business users to make better decisions with data. Why would I want to do machine learning in Looker? That's a great question. Well, because it allows the business analysts to use predictive analytics as part of their business intelligence workflows. It brings the power of Google machine learning to the business user. Mm, I see. Uh, can you show us how to get started? Sure. First, you'll want to find the machine learning accelerator in Looker. Just ask your Looker admin to install it from the Looker marketplace if you don't see it under the applications menu. All right, opening it now. It looks like you don't have any models yet. Let's create one. Go ahead and click the Create New Model button. Got it. You're looking at a model creation guide now. Let's pretend we're a BI analyst at a regional airline and we want to predict customer satisfaction. Why do I have to predict customer satisfaction? Uh, don't customers fill out surveys for that kind of thing? Well, some customers complete a satisfaction survey, but most don't. And we care about all of our customers' experience. For example, the airline might want to reach out to frequent flyers who likely had a poor experience recently, even if they didn't fill out a survey. Makes sense. Uh, also, I'm really curious about what factors are the most important for predicting customer satisfaction. Is it if the flight was on time? Uh, or could it be the amount of legroom or, or, or something else? That's a great question. Let's find out. First, we need to choose an objective. All right, I see two objectives. Uh, which one do I choose? So our machine learning model will predict whether or not a customer is satisfied with their flight, which means we're trying to predict a category or class. I see. Uh, so I'll click on predict a category. Uh, now what do I do? Well, right now we see a list of Looker Explorers. You'll want to select the Airline Customer Satisfaction Explorer to build your input data set to train the model. OK. Uh, now, this looks familiar to me. Uh, it's like a normal Looker Explorer. Uh, what fields should I select for my input data? So there are a few fields we know we want to include for sure. We definitely want to include the overall satisfaction field because it includes the outcome we're trying to predict. That makes sense. You'll also want to make sure you filter in that field so that we don't have any rows with null values. Why do I want to do that? Well, the algorithm needs to know the answer to train the model. So rows with null values are not really helpful. Got it. Uh, OK, I filter out rows with null values. Now, you should select the passenger ID field because we want our data to be at the passenger level. That makes sense. Uh, what other fields should I pick? So now. This is where your experience flying comes in. You should select fields that you think contribute to overall customer satisfaction. What fields do you think will help us predict if a passenger enjoyed their flight? Oh, all right. Um, let's see here. I'm going to pick seat comfort, in-flight entertainment, ease of online booking, legroom, and arrival delay. How do those sound to you, Chris? Those are all great. Intuitively, we would expect them to be correlated with the outcome. But you should also consider some other fields that describe the passenger. For example, business travelers might value different factors than leisure travelers. OK, uh, so I'll add customer type and type of travel. So now just click the Run button like you would do in any Looker Explorer. Done. And uh, should I click Continue now? Yes. And this brings you to the next step, which asks you to name your model and review the summary statistics for your input data. Got it. Uh, now, what do I choose as my target here? 
So the target is the field from your input data that contains the values you're trying to predict. In this case, it's overall satisfaction. Ah, that makes sense. Uh, and now do I click Generate Summary? Yeah. So now we can review our summary statistics to help us decide if we want to keep all the fields we selected in our model's training data. You can also access advanced model options from that gear wheel at the bottom. Is there anything I should uncheck or, or change here? No, the application automatically identified the passenger ID column and deselected it. We wouldn't want to train a model using a unique ID like that. I like that the application keeps me from uh, doing anything wrong. Uh, should I click on Create Model now? Yes, we're ready to create your first machine learning model. Now, this can take several minutes for the model training to learn all the patterns in the data. Ah, perfect. I need a cup of tea anyway. And we're back. Uh, did my model finish training? It looks like it. When the model finishes training, we see its evaluation metrics. You can use those metrics to compare the performance of different versions of your model. Oh, uh, like if I decided to add or remove fields and run it again? Exactly. It's an iterative process to continue improving the model. Now, I really want to see what's the most important factor in determining customer satisfaction. Can I? Actually, you can. Just click on the Feature Importance screen and you'll see. Ha, huh, look at that. It was seat comfort and in-flight entertainment. Uh, that's not what I had expected. Uh, so what can I do with a machine learning model like this once it's created? So now you can predict if a customer is satisfied with their flight, even if they don't respond to a survey. Sounds good. Uh, let's create some predictions. Let's do it. Just click the Continue button. Uh, oh, and now I see the Looker Explore UI again. Uh, do I pick the data that I want to use to get predictions? Exactly. And you'll notice that Looker already selects the required fields, so you'll just need to update your filters. Uh, so what should I filter on? Well, we'll want to get predictions for when overall satisfaction is missing, meaning the customer did not respond to our survey. OK, uh, now I just click the Run button. That's correct. Looker is now running a query against the data in BigQuery. Now that you have the data you want to score, just click the Generate Predictions button. That's so cool. Uh, so now I see the predictions in gray on the left. Now your predictions are accessible in BigQuery, and a LookML developer can add them to a Looker Explorer for building visualizations and dashboards. I've actually already created a dashboard for you as an example. Go to your main menu and open the shared folder. OK, got it. And now open the Airline Customer Satisfaction Predictions dashboard. Oh, and, and here I see that we have the number of satisfied and dissatisfied customers. Uh, so how would a business take action with these new insights? Well, in Looker, you can drill into data to get more detail about high-level metrics. So you can click on the dissatisfied customer count and see which customers we think did not enjoy their flight, even if they didn't respond to our survey. Ah, I see. Uh, so if this were real data, I could reach out to these customers and offer them a free upgrade on their next flight? Exactly. There are likely many ways a business might respond to knowing which customers were likely least satisfied with their service. With Looker, you now have the power to identify those customers. Well, Chris, I'm not a machine learning guy, but I like how even I was able to build a prediction model with just a few clicks. Now, let's say people who watch this want to get started with Machine Learning Accelerator. Uh, what can they do? Well, first, they should ask their Looker admin to install the application from Looker Marketplace. Then they can begin building machine learning models and using their predictions. And what are some common use cases that would benefit from machine learning models? The possibilities are really endless, but we've seen customers use these models for things like marketing and supply chain management use cases. Thank you for showing us this, Chris. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Chris or me, Add them in the comments section below. Also, let us know if there are any serverless topics you'd like to see in future episodes. We read every single comment. Until next time. Mm -hmm.